Welcome to Better Together, Two Girls in a Bible with Alexis B. Wolf and Sandy Brenner. I am Alexis B. Wolf of the Fire Store Global Ministries, and you can reach me at www.thefirestore.com. And I am Sandy Renner, and you can reach me at sandyrenner.net for my webpage. And any other way, you can just Google us. Yeah, just type mm-hmm. us in. You got us. And today, we have uh, our very, very special guest and my dear friend, Jamie Salters yeah. of Forerunners for Christ. She and her husband have been in ministry for many, many years. If you missed last week, I highly recommend going back and listening to last week's episode. Jamie was with us uh, last week as well, and she was talking about her book, Confessions of an Ex-Codependent, and how she just struggled with addiction. She had been sexually abused. She started drinking and doing drugs at a very, very young age to cope with all the stuff. She was overweight, so she was insecure about that. And then, oh my gosh, just the trickle-down effect of that. So last week, Jamie talked a lot about her book. So this week, Jamie, we are going to talk about what brought us to where we are, because this is such a Holy Spirit anointed moment to have you on air with us. Um, So a a while back, not not, in the not too recent past, Jamie came to us, she called me, and she could talk about it if she wants to, but basically she came to Sandy and I, she wanted some counseling, and she's like, I'm just in a really dry place. I don't know what's wrong with me. I mean, none of us have ever been there. It's just Jamie, clearly. No, <laughs> because we're perfect in every way. Yeah, right. That's it's, a joke. That is definitely a big fat joke because we all hit lows. We all hit dry, barren places. Um, so as Jamie came to us, we were sitting talking, whatever, and, and Holy Spirit was like, okay, this must be on the air because there are so many people who need to hear, Jamie, what you have to say. And so last week as she discussed her addictions and how it's just a constant journey of overcoming. It really is an ongoing process because mm-hmm. no one has arrived, no one is just one and done. Uh, and so it's interesting, and she wanted to share about how even though you could be in ministry, you could have published books, you can you could speak to multitudes and still hit lows. And so, Jamie, why don't you share with us some of the lows and what brought you here today that will help our audience go, okay, it's not just me. Because we do often feel like it's just me, I'm the only one. Yes. Yes, so as I talked about last week, you know, the journey of writing Confessions of a, a Codependent and all of the things that God has brought me out of and delivered me from, set me mm-hmm. free from, and then d- getting to do these exploits for the Lord, um, whether it was speaking at women's conference or, or um, small groups, all of these things. Well, this past year has been a, what I say, has been a very dry, um, dark season. There hasn't been any type of movement. Um, there hasn't and by been, movement, you mean God movement. Yeah, like I, I kept saying, I've, I've been saying, I, I can't hear God's voice. And we know that reading God's word is his voice. So mm-hmm. we can, uh, that is a lie from the pit. I just want to put that out there. But I continue to say, I, I, I don't feel anything, I can't hear anything. And we're day one, week one, one month, four months. Huh? Still. Uh, okay. I, is something going to happen? You know, I'm making myself available. I'm going into, you know, that special place that I have set up in my house to meet with the Lord. Um, okay, God, here I am. I there's nothing. It's like, God, could you just shake the heavens, rattle the furniture, knock me off my bench, Send me a whatever, yeah. but yeah. do something. Yeah. So yeah. I, I was feeling very um, crazy in my mind. Like, is God even for real? Has no. I no. <laughs> is I any of this even that. making a different just all what's the point crazy yes. ideas and thoughts mm-hmm. come into my head and so i was like okay guys finally after 12 months of this um foolishness wow. i was like okay maybe i need to talk to somebody i'm i'm in this place so let me see somebody send me somebody so i felt like god highlighted and i say god i had a thought that came to my mind, reach out to Alexis and Sandy. I said, okay, God, if this is you, then you have Alexis reach out to me. So that Which I failed. She did not listen. She didn't get the help me memo. <laughs> so, Oops. I, I, 
continued to like, I waited about a week and she never contacted me. So, so sorry. Um, and so finally I just reached out and I was like, hey, can I come see you and Sandy? I'm not sure what it is that I need. I just need to talk to somebody, whatever this looks like. So we came together and we had a beautiful conversation and I left feeling like, have you ever left your battery on? I meant your lights on in your car and it drained your battery? Yes. And the car wouldn't start the next day? You didn't I'm need a new, <laughs> me too. You didn't need a new battery. You just needed a jump. You needed a jump. So start. you ladies were my jumper cables to help get my battery started back in, putting into practice all of the things that we already know to mm -hmm. do, like being mindful of our thoughts and yeah. the words we're speaking and all of those different things. So I'm very grateful. But it's very helpful to be able to share that with um, you know you guys as the audience because we all have moments and times yes. like this where we feel. I remember saying to you, I feel double-minded, and I love and I would love for you to share. What I say? <laughs> oh, 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 yeah. <laughs> Never put an Alexis on the spot though. <laughs> See, that was the whole of us. Yeah, they were talking about being double-minded, how she was, she felt like she had no compassion, and she would take her mom out, and I'd have to take my mom to the doctor, and she loves her mother, and she wanted to do these things. She said, but I just felt no compassion. So that left her feeling double-minded. She said, because out outwardly, she was doing these kind of things, but inwardly, she was feeling like, seriously, I have to do this again, right? Is that, that summed that up pretty well? Yeah. Yeah. So she's very she's aggravated. In terms right, 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 yeah. And so... I just commented, it's like, that's not double-mindedness, that is called self-discipline. Yes. Because we all feel things, all of us, all of us, feel things that are contrary to the truth of God's Word. Absolutely. All of us. And so part of being self-disciplined is being able to say, I really don't want to get off my couch. I really don't want to be kind. I really don't want to help anyone. I just want to sit here and wallow a little bit. I mean, I mean I've, I've never felt that. And I know Sandy's never felt that. <laughs> All week long, I have battled the very same thing, mm. almost feeling overwhelmed, and I can't get do some things that I really want to do and need to do because I got to do all these things, other things mm -hmm. that I've got to do. Mm -hmm. And so we all go through that. We do. And so self discipline is that place where you say, "This is what needs to be done." A mature person that is thank you well, for calling me mature you are very i mature. needed that <laughs> yes because honestly that i mean we don't go around and say oh hey we're so mature but that really is what it is that is the definition when you think about the proverbs 31 woman she did what needed to be done she may not have every day felt like we're not going to talk about the proverbs 31 woman but except to say that she knew what needed to be done and she did she it whether did she, it. there nowhere did you read well today i fell down Right. Today I felt depressed. Today I didn't feel God's presence. Or today I felt very elated and I could do all these things. <laughs> and I just wanted to go to She zoo. just did. Right. And so maturity is, that's not double-mindedness, that you feel one thing and you do something else. That is maturity and, and really depth of understanding who God is, that this is what needs to be done. I don't have to feel it. If we, as we, if we as God's people do not get over this thing, of, well, I just didn't feel it. What does feeling have to do with anything? It isn't what we feel, and this thing of, oh, I just don't feel God's presence. Have you felt God's presence up to that point when you came? Like, you weren't feeling God's presence, but God is present. It is a knowing, it is an understanding of that, that immovable truth that God is present whether we feel Him or not. Well, I don't know about you, but I feel better already. Thank there you, again. Jesus. <laughs> right. Go ahead, Jane. Um, um, so, yeah. Um... I'm not sure. Okay, okay so, so what's interesting about this is that Jamie had, had, when Jamie came to us recently, she'd already written this fantastic book. She's been ministering for years and years and um, really has conquered a lot of things. So we really want to talk about how do you continue to conquer when you start feeling. Uh, so Jamie even said to me today, I'm just going to put you on the spot. She's like, I don't like the way I look on camera. I just don't feel pretty. I just... Honey, I feel fat. I feel frumpy. It's okay. I don't know how Sandy feels, but I don't feel pretty. It, it's, it's not a matter of what we feel. And Jamie is gorgeous. Look at her. Look, I mean, look at this beautiful woman. But her flesh said, I don't feel like I look pretty. I, I feel like I look cross-eyed. Isn't that what she said? Not like this. <laughs> so, 
Listen, and we laugh about that, but there are so many men and women, young and old, rich and poor, black and white, every other color in between, that we don't do things because we feel uh, uh, negatively about the way we look. Mm-hmm. And that is a huge thing. When you were young, you were comments were made, she talks about in her book that comments were made about how big she was and you need to lose weight or what I don't know, whatever. You can elaborate on that. Mm-hmm. But feeling overweight. And that that tormented her. Is that correct? Because you That's and I have been talking a long time. And so that that negative and you talk about the baggage and she talks about the bag lady in her book and it is so good because uh, it's such a great visual. But she carried the baggage of these false identities a long time. I'm fat, I'm ugly. Oh, uh, there's so she's married to a black man, and there's a thing in your book where you talk about that people had so insulted you about not dating white men that you were praying for a white man <laughs> because <laughs> you because the false identity is you have to do this because you, you are white you must marry white right. and so I think I love the candor in your book because that was a very real thing for you and we as born again believers still feel things that are wrong. And we have to understand this word. We must be in this word to continue. Last week you mentioned a refreshing. Um, and that we must feel refreshed. Or maybe you said, I don't know, one of us said it. Um, but, but we must be constantly refreshed because otherwise when we do get into those dry and barren lands like, like where Jamie found herself. I mean, we've gone through 2020 and she'd gone through COVID and so she was out of work. And although she was still being paid, uh, she had all this free time and she was doing all this stuff with, with her house and her your daughter's house. And then it's like, okay, now I'm twiddling my thumbs. Now what? Where are you, Jesus? And we must be refreshed in that and not latch on to these old false identities. And last week you mentioned that it's so easy. And Sandy, you and I both know we see it all the time. We've done it. Yes. We've seen other people do it. That we default to those old negative yes. identities. And we start carrying that same baggage. And even though you've been walking with God a long time and you've helped countless people in their walk with God, knowing this book has helped countless people, still she had to get to the place... Talk about the addiction. So you were working on your house. She was really being uh, industrious, and she was doing cool yeah. stuff in her house. And then what happened? And so I picked back up the addiction to Diet Coke. Now, previously, God had delivered me from drugs and alcohol. Beer was my thing. And after working, um, I would love to just have a cold beer. But knowing that I would never drink again... I had that piece together, but I picked up Diet Coke and started drinking that. And I'm not talking about just, oh, there's nothing wrong with Diet Coke. That's well, not the point. Right. <laughs> right. A Diet Coke. <laughs> the, the point was a Diet Coke turned into several Diet Cokes a day to where I was hiding Diet Cokes. I was hiding them in my car away from my husband. Um, and so I noticed this addiction starting to take over my life mm-hmm. again. But the enemy would say, oh, it's just Diet Coke. It's okay. There's nothing wrong There's with no that. Alcohol. Mm-hmm. No alcohol. No drugs. drugs. Yes. It's okay. But understanding the behavior and identifying the behavior and then so I've been on this journey now of, of going deeper into what addiction is, what mm-hmm. it looks like, where it comes from, and we always want to address the behavior and not the root cause. Right. Yes. That's like very where is, where's, where's the root of this where I feel like this thing has to, in the moment, is satisfying and soothing. But as soon as it's over, as soon as the fuzz goes down, then I don't get that. So now i got to go buy another one so I can get the fuzz again. Yeah. And so um, just learning... And I've been watching um, videos by um, Dr. Gabor Mate, and it has been so refreshing and eye-opening, just understanding the addiction process, what it is, and all of that kind of stuff. And that's one of the things, you know, we can, the Word and prayer, those, those definitely helped they are the reason why I'm here. I don't want you to hear what I'm not saying. But there's same, there's some things that are in our life that we have to understand on a deeper level in order to... It's just like having 
cancer, knowing you have cancer, like there's treatments that have to be done depending on the type of cancer that you may have. Um, all of them are, are different, different treatment processes, different outcomes, all of that stuff. So it's the same thing with, with our, our things that we're struggling with. And I would go out on the limb to say, according to what he defines as addiction, we all have some type of areas in our life where we're addicted to something, whether right. that's mm -hmm. shopping, eating, um, working, all of these different things because these outward um, things that we're doing, <coughs> for me, this part is for me, these outward things that I was doing, it validates who I am. Being able to speak at women engagements and doing all of these exports, it validates and makes me feel worthy. But when you're in a dry season and you're sitting still, you feel forgotten about. Mm -hmm. You feel like my life has no meaning. Um, I'm not valuable anymore. I'm not worthy anymore. What did I do? And just uh, this whole victim mentality mm -hmm. that, that starts to take root. And if we don't snatch that thing uh -huh. and bring it into the obedience of Christ, mm -hmm. according to his word and what he says about us, it, we're going to drown That's right. in that. And if I can address that really quickly, and Sandy, you and I have seen this a long time, I know you've seen it in ministry, that we can actually be addicted to ministering. Absolutely. We can be very, I've very addicted. That. And, and we've seen it, find our identity in Christ in how much we minister. In our ministry. And then what happens is when we have a lull and nobody's oh, calling oh, and my. we don't have any... <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me, we'll have these speaking engagements and we're not doing that thing or I haven't I don't have a new book out or you know, whatever the case may be. Then we start to feel like, oh my gosh, well it was me. Why? Because our addiction was in the doing, even if it's for Christ, that could be because our focus then becomes what we're doing and not who God is. Even the good is not necessarily God. <clears throat> That's exactly right. And we need to be very aware of that. So if you are a minister or just someone who ministers a lot, like even at your job or wherever you are, and because I've, I've actually had <clears throat> a minister tell me, oh, you know, I just I, I just thrive on, on being able to minister when people come to my house or they're calling me or I'm teaching a Bible study or little what. And she's like, I, but I get so depressed when I'm in a lull. It's like, then that says self is at the, is at the core. That's right. And really, that is what all this is about. You know, Janie's so. journey, my journey, Sandy's journey, is we get so focused on self. We really are, our, our biggest addiction, me, me. generally speaking, is us. It is self. And so we are addicted to self-gratification. And right. yours came out of drugs and sex and needing approval from people. And, you know, Sandy and I have talked about all kinds of stupid stuff. <laughs> so, but it, it lands in many different places. So we do need to be cautioned that, that even in ministry we don't allow ourselves to take on a false identity of who I am as a minister as opposed to who I am in Christ. Yes. So I want to go back real quick when she was talking about the refreshing. Uh, the scripture in Acts, Peter said, repent that the times of refreshing may come upon you. Mm. Repent from what? Repent of believing lies. Mm. Repent of receiving false identity. Repent for believing anything outside of what God right. said, who God says you are, what you have, who you are in Him. Everything outside of that is really a lie. And we build on those lies and we receive those lies and we begin to pack our bags as she talked last week about the baggage. I really love that analogy too because we all carry around the baggage. And I've said this repeatedly, one of my favorite, favorite Bible stories is where David was going to the camp of the Philistines to take provision to his brothers uh, as they were fighting Goliath. And the Bible says that he left his baggage with the gate. Mm. Mm. That's good. And we had to learn to leave our baggage with the gatekeeper, mm -hmm. which is Jesus Christ. He nailed it anyway to the cross. And we just keep trying to borrow it back. So I just want to tell you, if you believe some lies, if, if what her, she is saying is penetrating your heart, then really all you got to do is repent. And that means simply returning back to God and said, show me one more time, Holy Spirit, who I am in you. Find that right identity. Mm -hmm. So, okay, Jamie, so you've written the book, you've talked about addiction, this incredible thing, it's a year or two later, and now you're dealing with the addiction of Diet Coke. What did you do from that point? So, one, I had to recognize that this is um, 
something else is going on. I did stop drinking Diet Coke, and I feel like it was a God thing after I came to you ladies um, and shared that. I began to do more research on addiction and complex trauma, and I felt like this was the path that God was leading me on um, and started reading um, a couple of books by um, Dr. Mate and just really going deeper into understanding the addiction piece. And there's some really um, cool nuggets that I got to pick up from watching his teaching and reading some of his books. And I, w I wanted to share about, um, you know, we hear about being triggered. And trigger is now a buzzword. We all mm -hmm. talk about that. But he made a very interesting um, analogy that a trigger is from a um, from a gun, but we possess the ammunition, the explosiveness mm -hmm. inside of us. So just because someone pulls the trigger doesn't mean that the gun has to go off. Mm -hmm. So what is in us? What is that explosiveness with inside mm -hmm. of us? And his point being that triggers can be very helpful in identifying that, that we don't have to run from triggers or shut down going deeper into that and I really started paying attention to what I call triggers and I, I'll share an example me and my husband was having a conversation about um, one of our children and in that conversation I felt like he was attacking me as a parent which he absolutely was not prior to learning about what Dr. Monte said I would have automatically started fighting, <laughs> arguing, being defensive, and going into a shutdown mode where I'm just not even going to talk or whatever that looks like. But in that moment, understanding that the explosiveness is inside of me, I, I simply said to my husband, I feel like you're attacking me as a parent. This is how I feel. I know that's not what you're doing, but this is how it's making me feel. And immediately he was like, okay, well, let's change the direction of the conversation. And we was able to change the direction. Mm -hmm. And it was fine. We left that conversation in a very good place. And that is healthy communication. Healthy yes. communication. There's no such thing as perfect relationships, but there are healthy relationships. Mm -hmm. yes. And that's something that's that good. I had to learn because, you, s especially with Hollywood and movies and all of this oh, foolishness yeah. where it's not even, this stuff is so unreal. It's well, not real? No. I'm so disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> and so we, <laughs> right? And so, so oh, learning God. that recently has been very eye-opening. So, so just, the word God gave me at the beginning of the year where I've been struggling through all of this was um, learn to rest in the silence. Be still mm -hmm. and know. And I don't know about you ladies. That's easy to say. But it's a little harder to walk it out. <laughs> Silence? I don't have a control all delete button. There's <laughs> so much noise and commotion mm -hmm. and just stuff. Yes. It's like little minions running around my head all day long. And once you get one sit seated, you got ten other running around, like a bunch so of you babies. Can, you can never yeah. herd them all together to just sit still. And so this has been a dreadful process, just trying to sit in the silence when mm -hmm. everything is so noisy internally. So you've you've had a lot of wisdom about the silence. If if you're uh, used to being busy like like me, you like her. Most everybody is, but um. We're busy, 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 busy. Well, COVID in itself shut a lot of things down. It certainly did. So it, it really restrained us from doing some of the things we normally would do. So you found yourself, we, we found a lot of people come to us and said, you know, I find myself with nothing, emptiness. And God's not using me anymore. And Alexis really talks a lot about that. I'm not going to jump in. And it, leaves us feeling, <laughs> it leaves us feeling with this big void in right, our Right, useless useless mm -hmm. and uh, which is truly a lie of the enemy. Yes. Uh, I am always m moving. I am a moving and moving moving person and uh, there's been times when there will come a lull in my life so I've experienced those and I start getting antsy. Oh. 
And a friend of mine, she Not said, Sandy, Sandy <laughs> listen, you need to learn to stop and enjoy that and rest in that mm -hmm. because the busy is right around the corner. Right. It's not over, folks. It's just right around the corner. And God may be readying you for the next season yeah. of your life, the next busy time of your life. So you've got that time to rest and reflect and go back. And I won't talk about the trigger for a minute. You know, there's many, many triggers. I was a smoker 40-something years ago, and God delivered me. But there are still times when I will smell a certain smell or hear a certain song or you eat a really good meal and that trigger of smoking is right there because you you associated it with this place like the beach or you're associating so there are many triggers mm -hmm. doesn't mean we have to let the gun go off right. I, I really like that God is our that. safeguard you know, there's a safety on every gun mm -hmm. there's a safety on Christ every gun safety. and that's a that's good vision to have and so uh, what, what Jamie is telling you today is there, there are things that trigger those addictions. There are things that instigate those things. We don't have to fall prey to them. And in the silence, in the silence, that's where we really can get messed up. Because like you said, we live in a very noisy, noisy, yes. and busy, <laughs> busy world. And I, I had a cousin, well, I have a cousin, and she had triplets. And of course, they're in college now. But she, when they were babies, she'd better get one down and quiet and the other two. Wah! So there was always noise. And that's the way our lives are. That's the way the world is set up. But God is set up in the quiet place. You know, he's in Isaiah and he said, you know, I, I look for the big voice. I look for the thunder. I look for the earthquake. I look for the big thing. But that still small voice. We are not comfortable with the still small voice. We're not comfortable with the quiet. Mm -hmm. We need to learn to get comfortable in the presence of God. There is peace and quietness. And that's where God really speaks the mm -hmm. deepest revelations to us. Yeah. You know, I love the story of Mary and Martha. And we really we really don't do Martha justice. Um, Mary was always just in through the worship and the sitting at his feet and Paul Martha's in there washing them dishes, you know. But guess who Jesus came to when he wanted to talk about the revelation of resurrection? He didn't go to Mary the worshiper. He went to Martha to do her. And he revealed to her the secrets of his resurrection coming forth. I always found that interesting. The very one we kind of put down, that's who Jesus went to talk about the deep stuff. So sometimes, while Mary sat at his feet, but Martha was busy taking care of all the outside. When we're busy taking care of the outside things, but when we have to go out into quiet and meet him, that's where he gives us revelation. Stop despising yeah. the quiet. Uh, and we have about another minute, but in 2011, it was November 2011, I was doing TV and radio, and honey, I was buzzing, and for a little while, I was hopping and popping and doing all this stuff, and I had already written, I think, two books at the time, and, uh, and God said, shut it down. Shut it, I mean, literally, shut it down. I was like, well, let me explain something to I'm, you, God. This is not how it works. Right, and so I thought, okay, and he said, cancel everything, and I already had some, like, TV and radio stuff set up, and he said, cancel it all, and they're calling me, can you come? Nope, and I was very obedient to that, but it, it, it was still like, wait, what? And I thought, okay, six months into it, I thought, okay, this will be over here shortly. Okay, we you know we'd like to get into the At the end of seven months, by the eighth month, I'll be eight years. Nine months, I'm giving birth to this thing. I know, right? <laughs> so we like to we like to put all this. And I'm about numbers. I understand that God is about numbers, but it was eight years before God re-released me to get up and do some stuff. But in that time, because after and he, then after like a year, I was like, uh, are we done yet? <laughs> right. <laughs> Two years, and I was like, Jesus. Uh, I've almost lost sight of it. I know, I right? By the end, because I was like, man, I'm ready to have my own show, and I'm going to have this, I'm going to do that. And it's like, you know, and, and what God revealed to me was lovely. He said, you're teetering on pride. Mm -hmm. What? What? And so, although I hadn't gone over the way over, he said, but you're, you're doing the right thing ahead of me. He said, so you wait till my right time. It was eight years, and in those eight years, I wrote the bulk of my books. I mean, now I hardly have time to write. Um, this, I, I've only published one book this year. That's crazy. Wow. I'm just like, and I'm not just saying this. Her books are absolutely amazing. And if you want to grow,
rose spiritually, you check out her library of books. Uh, I'll send a, I'll pay you later. No, I'm just kidding. I didn't tell her that. I'm right to check but out. But I'm serious. But in that, in those eight years, and we had all kind of crazy happen between sickness and house fires. I mean, honey, we had stuff going on. And boy, I closed in with God. Mm -hmm. And he said, you write these books now because when the time comes and the people come, they'll be ready. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like, what's that movie, Field of Dreams? If you build it, they will come. Yeah, I had come. to, but that was my time of building, building me spiritually, building these books. And honestly, by the time he released me, I was like, well, I don't really want to go. <laughs> I was like, I'm good being quiet, sitting behind my desk doing nothing. Listen, we have, we've gone over. If you just tuned in, you're listening to Better Together, Two Girls in a Bible, and today it's Three Girls in a Bible yes. with Jamie Salter. She is our guest last week and this week. We are excited about her book, Confessions of an Ex-Codependent. You can buy any of our books on Amazon.com. Mm -hmm. Just type in Jamie Salter's or Confessions, and all this will be at the end of the video. Sandy and I both have our most recent books, which are both autobiographies, stories, uh, stories, a the journey... A woman's journey <laughs> of becoming imperfect was perfect. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Stories. And then Goucher's Got a Great Expectation. Catch all of our, our previous videos on YouTube.com. Thank you for listening. You could have been listening to anything else, but thank you for listening to, to, to these three ladies. Uh, we'll see you guys back next week, 8 a.m. for a new broadcast. Yeah. Shalom.